If you would, get your Bibles out and turn to Romans chapter 5 and put a marker there. and We're going to start with our key verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. How many in here want to get free this morning? Can I hear an amen? amen. Well, let's get free this morning. God just waiting to hear it from you. You know you'll know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. We're continuing on our series entitled Righteousness. It says in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21, For He has made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Let's pray. Father God, we thank You for Your presence in the house this morning. We ask You for revelation flowing, understanding flowing, answers to our questions made evident this morning. We thank You that Your Holy Spirit is moving among us, setting us free, delivering us, healing us up, We thank You, Lord, that what Jesus did on the cross, You gave us 2,000 years ago, and You gave us the keys of the kingdom, so we release it now in the house. And we give You all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. For He has made Him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. When you see the word righteousness... It kind of turns most people off, but all it is is a big word that means right. Don't let it scare you. It's old English. It means God's righteous. It means He's right. It's describing His nature. It's who He is. And He's the only one right. If you think you can get right, you and you, all you did is go self-righteous. The only way you can get right is being in Him. Notice the last part of that verse that said that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Not that we deserve it. I don't know about you, I don't deserve it. Not that we can earn it. We're made it. So you're made righteous when you accepted Jesus as Lord. Amen? Amen? You're righteous right now. You're as right as God. And if that bothers you, just just hang on a second. Let me explain what we're talking about. Every human is made up of three parts. You're a spirit. You possess a soul. You live in a body. The real you is that spirit man. Your soul is your will, your emotions... Your intellect, it's your mind. Your body is what you're in that you can move around in. But the real you is spirit. The real you is righteous. The soul man and the body man got a little work to do. Amen? Amen? Amen. (laughs) Everybody saying amen, praise God. But the real you... Is as right as God. Well, how can you say that? 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says, He that's joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Amen. You're one spirit with Him. If I could open up Andrew right now to see the real Andrew, I could not make out the difference between Andrew and Holy Spirit. Amen. Because you're one with Him. Amen. You're one with Him. Amen. But we have to understand that and we have to start believing that. We're one spirit with Him. You know, when, when we finally leave this planet, and uh, I don't think it's much longer the way this world's going, that Jesus is going to come get His church. So we've got a lot of work to do before we leave. Amen? Amen? But when we finally leave this planet, your spirit man leaves, and when you meet Jesus in the air, your spirit man, your spirit man is not going to get any more right. Because you're one spirit with Jesus. 
you know how right you are? It bothers people just hear that sometimes because you don't know me. I do know you. And I can assume the rest, amen? Amen. (laughs) God's holy. He's pure. He's perfect. Could that holy, pure, perfect God be one with someone that's not holy, perfect, and pure? He couldn't. That's how holy, perfect, and pure you are. Hallelujah. You're that right. And when you start believing this and start stepping out in faith in your true identity, you position yourself for God to move in your life and impart His presence in your life and changing things in your soul and your body. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All of a sudden, you're going, out, you're going after God. And this habit that's been controlling you, you haven't even messed with it today. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? You haven't even messed with it this week. Amen? Amen? You didn't even try to quit the habit. You just went after Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. Grabbing hold of God is letting go of you. Grabbing hold of you, trying to fix you, will make a worse you. Amen. You know, I spent 13 years ministering at Fayette County Detention Center. And I'm not against the government programs, but if you're in the 12 steps and your higher powers are rock, it ain't going to cut it. It better be Jesus Christ. I mean, you might have that pet rock, but when the going gets rough, it ain't coming through. (laughs) Praise God. (laughs) How do you know I have a pet rock? (laughs) First Corinthians one twenty four says, "Christ is the power." Would you like some power? You've got to connect with Him. How do you connect with Him? Realize you're the righteousness of God in Christ and declare you're the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. And when you declare who you are in Christ, it positions you for His empowering presence to get in your life and manifest all around you and change things in your life. Amen. But it all starts in faith. Some people hear messages like this and they try it. There's no place in God's Word that He tells you to try it. Because if you tried it, He's saying like, you know, it might not work for you. But try it. No, no, you do it. You do it. I've been believing this since I was 12. Still working for me. As old as I am. Praise God. Still working for me. But I know who I am in Christ. I declare it in the morning. I, in the morning, I pull out my Romans thirteen fourteen, and it says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and you won't make provision for the flesh to fulfill its desires. So what if I don't put it on? Put Him on. You'll make provision for the flesh to fulfill the desires. And you think, well, how, how come uh, the righteousness is not working for me? Did you put them on? You have to put them on. How did you get born again? You confessed Jesus as Lord, didn't you? Don't take your confession lightly. That's how your confession, that one little confession by accepting Jesus as Lord changed your destination from hell to heaven. Your confession is pretty, pretty important, isn't it? Well, in, in Colossians 2, 6, it says, As you received Christ Jesus, so walk in Him. How did you receive Him? You confessed Him as Lord. How do you walk in Him? Confess His Lordship in your life. Do you want to walk in Him? Amen? Amen. I want to walk in Him. And when I decide to do what He says, 2 Corinthians 4.13 says, We believe, therefore we speak. Philemon 6 says, The communication of my faith becomes effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that's in me in Christ Jesus. The speaking of my faith becomes active, operative, power exercised by the declaration 
of every good thing that's in me in Christ Jesus. What's in you? Everything you need for this life. Amen. Everything. You need healing. You declare it. What happens when I declare it? Jeremiah 1.12 says, God said He will watch over His Word to perform it. Yeah. Amen. Isaiah 57.19 says, He'll create the fruit of your lips. Well, why need creating the fruit of my lips? What are you saying? Mm-hmm. Praise God. It's time for the church to wake up to the reality of how to walk by faith. That's why I started with that verse. For He was made to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm not confessing I'm righteous trying to get righteous. I'm confessing I'm righteous because He made me righteous. And when I believe it and I declare it, His righteous life, which is His grace, will manifest in my life. I like being my age and being healthy. Praise God. Yeah. Next Saturday, I'll be 65. Shut the front door. And the front door shut. I ain't letting a thing in either. <laughs> when, the, when the stuff tries to get in that front door, I take it out. Kick it back out the front door. That's, I'm glad you brought that up. Too many people... All of a sudden, something attacks them and the devil's at their door. And they open it. Oh, it's you. Come on in. Uh, Come on. I'm speaking truth. And they take it. I don't take it. Devil hits me, I hit him back. Devil attacks me, I attack back. How can you be that strong? Because I know who I am in Christ. I'm not talking about who I am in Chris. I'm talking about who I am in Christ. See, a lot of people take this wrong way. He's just so arrogant. Well, you don't know. You don't know who I'm talking about. I'm so glad the old Chris is dead. He wasn't no good. Galatians 2.20 says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Yet not I. Yet not I. Have you reached that point? Yet not I. That's a whole series right there. <laughs> I want my cake and eat it too, uh, you know. I want, I want God, but don't cramp my lifestyle. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Amen. You're hearing a powerful message. You're going to get stronger and stronger before we're done. Amen. And you're going, man, I'm going to do this. <laughs> then tomorrow all hell breaks loose and you just wallow in it. I'm going to be calling in to you right now. Don't dare ask me to come back to that church again. I ain't ever going back to that church. It doesn't work. No, you don't work. Come on. Come on. Are you going to take this serious? You've got to take it serious. I've been born again since I was 12. You can't fake it this long. It really works. Amen? It really works. But back to what I was saying, I like being healed and healthy. Whole and strong. Every year we're getting a year older. You better learn how to fight. You better learn how to fight. Well, you know, but I got this on me and and my second cousin twice removed said he had it on him too. And man, you're about to go through it. Are you going to believe second cousin twice removed or believe what the Bible says? It says by his stripes you were healed. First Peter 2.24. What are you going to believe? It's up to you. Well, the TV said this and the commercial said that. Well, sorry to hear that. What are you feeding on? Uh, you are what you eat. I feed on the Word. I consume the Word. My son, attend to my Word. Incline your ears to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. If the Word is life to me, I'm going to find it. And it's health to all my flesh. I'm going to walk in it. Proverbs 4, 23, 22. I'm going to go for that. Well, you know, you know some, people, some people have some good advice. Good advice is only good if it's based on God's Word. When you say, well, you know, Brother Chris, you're about to turn 65. You know what happens when people get that old. Does that sound like chapter and verse? 
Not one bit. I'm not listening to that myth. Well, you know, when you get 50, things start falling off. When you get 60, the mind starts going. No, not mine. Not mine a bit. I'm not going to let it happen. Well, how can you say that? Because I know who I am in Christ. My Bible says in 1 Timothy 6.12, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life whereunto you've been called and have confessed a good confession before many witnesses. There's that confession again. Fight the good fight of faith. When Paul told Timothy to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life, he was talking to Timothy who was already a Christian. He wasn't telling Timothy to get saved. He was telling Timothy to hold tightly to what he already had. Hold tightly. Lay hold. The Greek says hold tightly to eternal life. What do you mean? you got eternal life in you. What is that? The God kind of life. It's the good life down here. It's the heaven on earth life. Well, I don't know about that. Well, apparently you're not in your Bible much. Come on. Matthew 6, 10, Jesus said, Pray my kingdom come, my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Apparently He wants you to have it. So why doesn't He give it to me? Uh, you're not in your Bible much. He already gave it to you 2,000 years ago. Come on. It's up to you if you want it. You're looking at somebody that really goes after it. Amen. If you hang out with us in 10 years, I'm going to look healthier than I, than I do now. And I've been saying that ever since this church started. I don't mind health. Amen. Not a bit. But you have to do what He says. Sickness comes knocking on your door. You resist in Jesus' name. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Well, I resisted the devil, Brother Chris, but he didn't flee from me. Did you do the first part? Too many times we think that something hits, so we fight in us. You and you will lose. You've got to submit to God, which is to identify with Christ. You've got to get in Him. You and you will lose all the time. But you and Him guaranteed to win. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty seven says, Thanks be unto God who gives us the victory in Christ. I'm on that win-win program, Andrew. I'm on... Win and keep winning. How can you say that? First Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. He gives me the victory in Christ. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some. No, I don't. Well, you know, sometimes that's how the ball bounces. I'm not bouncing the ball. <laughs> I'm going to go with Jesus. Did He say He'll give me the victory in Christ? Amen. So is, is that telling me that if, I, if I'm in Christ, I'll get the victory? And 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. There it is again. All these verses are identity verses. Do you want to triumph in everything you do? Get in Christ. Get in Christ. When, when do you do that? When don't you do it? It's supposed to be living in it every day. Acts 17.28 says, For in Him we live, we move, we have our being. Is, is that how, you, is that how you're, you're walking today? In Him? That's why I told you before I started, be sure and hear this over and over because there will be a lot of verses come out real quick. I would probably say 90% of everything I said to you, minus the first scripture I told you to go to, is not even on these notes. Somebody needs to hear this apparently. Amen? Yeah, yeah. I just do this, you know, if I get a little hot. God wants us free. Why? Because He loves you. Yes. And because the goodness of God leads people to repentance. Amen. What do you mean? Romans 2, four says the goodness of God leads people to repentance. God wants you in your circle of influence to show the world how He treats His son, His daughter. He wants you to show the world how He treats His kids. Come on. How does He treat His kids? He blesses them with health, with prosperity in every area of life. When the whole world is going to hell in the handbasket, you can't wipe off that Holy Ghost smile on your face when you go to work on Monday morning. I work at a car lot every morning, Monday morning. I walk through the garage and it looks, it looks like death warmed up in there. <laughs> I say, good morning. Hey. 
<laughs> How was your weekend? Good. It's like they're dead. Come Wednesday, I see a little life. Friday, 4.55, I mean, man, we're doing good. <laughs> but I'm walking through to shed the light. I'm walking through to release the anointing too. They just don't know that. If I touch you, the anointing's released. How do you know that? Because I know my God. If Jesus walked in right now and said, David, I just want the anointing to be released on you, and he did that, wouldn't you believe it would be released? Mm -hmm. Well, 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says we are the body of Christ. So that would be his hand then, wouldn't it? I never saw it that way. That's why you're here right now, to, to hear this and then start believing it. And get off you. Trust me. It's not about you. This life's never been about you. That's the problem we've always had. It's always been about me. <laughs> always about me. I wonder what I'm going to do today. Where, where, where you want to go today? Where you want to eat today? Let's, let's, let's think of something we need to do. Have you consulted God at all this morning? I want to be all about Jesus. I want to experience His presence wherever I go. I want to walk in on Monday morning and His presence is radiating from me who is the body of Christ. But you've got to expect it. You have to expect it or it won't happen. And that's for anything. If you need healing in here, you have to have expectation that God healed you 2,000 years ago. Then you speak it forth by releasing it and expecting it to manifest in your life. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Hope in the Bible is confident expectation. Faith is the substance of what you expect. Well, you don't expect anything. It can't produce any substance. Is my faith that important? Yeah, because it's, it's Jesus' faith. You got His faith when He got in you. He just wants you to learn how to walk in it 24-7. That's why He said in the back of 2 4, the just shall live by faith. That's why He said in Romans 1 17, the just shall live by faith. That's why he said in Galatians 3.11, the just shall live by faith. That's why he said in Hebrews 10.38, now, when's now? now? The just shall live by faith. He said in 2 Corinthians 5.7, walk by faith and not by sight. What's our part? Just to live by faith. Let me break that down a little bit more. To choose to walk by faith. That made it easy. You have to choose to. Or God can't move in your life. Jesus hung on the cross over 2,000 years ago and died for 8 billion people in counting. Are they all accepting Him? No. So they're not all getting saved, are they? No. But all they got to do is accept Him. What is that? Just give up and take Him. Mm-hmm. You don't have to clean up. Come on. Amen. If you think you've got to clean up to get God, you'll never find Him. You get God, He cleans you up. Amen. That's all there is to it. He'll clean you up. I don't, care, I don't care what life you've been in in the past. Don't look back no more. Go with the good life ahead. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. 2 Corinthians 5.17 You're a new creation in Christ. You're brand new, righteous, holy, perfect, and pure in your spirit. And when you realize that, it will be released into your soul and your body. But you have to... Choose to walk with Him. That's all you got to do. And don't wait when all hell breaks loose. Don't. That's not when you go, Oh, Jesus. That's the, <laughs> and that's the first time you talk to Him this month. I mean, He'll let you, he'll let you abuse Him that much because He loves you that much. But what, why, don't you, why don't you get with Him when you just got a raise? Boss calls you in, wants to pay you more money. You go home saying, yeah, they know, they know how valuable I am. <laughs> You're about to fall again. You know, pride goes before a fall. Give glory to God. 
Give glory to God. Amen? Amen. You want the good life? Let the old you stay dead. Amen. Just let it stay dead. No, the average Christian's holster in a shovel. <laughs> let y'all think about that a second. <laughs> what do you mean by that? They can exhume the old man like that. Mm-hmm. How's that happen? Well, somebody cussed you and told you to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as mean as I can get, too. I'm sorry if that ain't mean enough. Let's see. I don't even know how to get mean. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Uh, who's talking back? The old you or the new you? Huh? Who's talking back? We'll find out if you're walking with Jesus. <laughs> We'll find out if you're walking with Jesus. Let's take this personal relationship with Jesus serious. And wake up tomorrow morning and you got Jesus on your mind. You wake up and say, Lord Jesus, in you I live, I move, I have my being today. Acts 17, 28. Set the stage right. No, too many people, they don't sleep one night. They wake up with a headache and, and, and the first declaration they say is, oh, crap. <laughs> well, that's not a praise word. <laughs> and it could be more colorful, but that's about as far as I go. <laughs> the day has already started to where you took the bait, the temptation bait to let the devil in. Because you didn't sleep, your head's hurting. But God already made provision for that. He will give you rest. He will heal your head. But you've got to line your mouth up. What's, what's so important about that? Death and life are in the power of your tongue. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 18.21 Love is a choice. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Whichever one you choose, you'll eat it. How do I choose it? By the words of your mouth. By the words of your mouth. Well, I, you know, I'm just frustrated. Well, okay, then repent. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yep. <laughs> we haven't arrived in our soulish man, in our body man. We're practicing righteousness, but First John 3, 7 says, He that practices righteousness is righteous even as he's righteous. In other words, righteousness is going to happen if you practice it. Amen. Being right is going to happen if you practice it. Walking in the empowering presence of God is going to happen if you practice it. Grace will happen if you practice it. But you've got to practice it. I can preach my heart out to you, and as soon as you get on 27, you can get in a raging fit because somebody cut, uh, cuts you off. <laughs> yeah, just look straight ahead and say, preach that, Pastor Chris. No, and nobody know I'm talking to you, amen? <laughs> I mean, we're on 27 here. Nobody likes that road. <laughs> I work off of it. My church is off of it. And we live off of it. I have plenty of opportunities to identify with Christ. I deliver parts. I have all kinds of opportunities to identify with Christ. Do you always identify? I'm practicing. (laughs) Appreciate that. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm practicing. Some days I do a lot of repenting. (laughs) Praise God. Amen. Amen. Some days we need to do a lot of repenting, don't we? Amen. Amen. (laughs) Let's see, I told y'all, I got to get back to this message. (laughs) We got got 20 points. That was point one. (laughs) No, it ain't that long. It's not that long. Go to Romans. <laughs> go to Romans five, like I, like I mentioned earlier. <laughs> oh man, we're getting free this morning. Getting healed up this morning. Getting delivered this morning. You're knowing the truth. 
And it said it'll set you free. Amen. The devil will work you over while you're you're in here too. <laughs> Have you noticed that? Oh, I know. You know that sounds really good, but you know, this preacher needs to need to come down to reality. I am in. Re- it's called reality church. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in reality. I might not be in your reality. Come on. Jesus said, "I'm the way, the truth, and the life." Truth in the Greek is reality. Mm-hmm. I'm in reality. Great. What reality are you in? Oh, great. It's up to you. Like I said, I spent 13 years ministering in jail. When God called me to go in there, I said, they're not going to listen to me. I've never done any of that. And I never have. He was consistent. Never have. But he told me he wants his son to go in there and let people know how to live the good life without going through the hell first. Amen. And I had an audience all the time, didn't I? Why? Because it was Jesus. Amen. It was Jesus. And if they wouldn't come to my Bible study, I would go to their day room. <laughs> yep. And you can't, you can't hide too many places in there. Have you ever been in there? <laughs> but there was, one, there, there, was, there was one guy that loved to hide in there. <laughs> and it's the one that's laughing the most right now. <laughs> <laughs> he would see me and go hide. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Just trying to help you live the good life. If you want the good life. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. It says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more... They that receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Christ Jesus. By one man's offense, death reigned by one. Who's this one man? That's Adam. When Adam and Eve showed up, they messed up and they they let death reign in this world. But look at the good news. Much more... They that receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Do you want to reign in life? Well, I, I don't agree with that. You don't agree with Romans five seventeen? You're not. You're not trying to agree with my opinion. That's what it says, right? Yes. In, in Revelations one six, Jesus calls you a king and, and a priest. In Revelation 19, 16, he calls himself the king of kings. Who's the kings he's king of? We're the kings. Yes, but see, this really messes up a dumbed-down, world-inspired identity. We're trying to get you out of that mess. We want to get you into a God-inspired identity. It not only changes you internally, but it will change you externally because once you start believing this and walking in it, you'll start reigning in life. And you won't have to put up with what the devil wants to bring to your door. That's why Ephesians 4.27 said, don't give place to the devil. Don't give place to the devil. Well, I got prayed for at church yesterday and it just seemed like it came back. You gave him place. Are you saying it's my fault? All day long. (laughs) <laughs> can I get a witness Amen. who do I blame well God didn't move really he did it 2,000 years ago maybe you didn't take it and release it and walk in it that messes up Christians heads you need healing he gave it to you 2,000 years ago why aren't I healed because you got to know you already have it in that spirit man that's perfect right holy righteous and release it that's why he gave you the keys of the kingdom in Matthew sixteen nineteen. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Whatever you shut down here, if it's shut down up there, it is shut down in your life. Amen. Whatever it is from sickness to addiction, it'll be shut down. Whatever you loose on earth is loose in heaven. Whatever's been released up there, you can release it down here. Man, this sounds really good. It is. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Because this will be this will be over in just a few minutes. It's real easy for the devil to let you, let the devil talk you out of it. He'll say, you know what? You've been this way for twenty, thirty, forty years. Don't get too excited. 
I mean, it was a nice uh, cheerleading uh, uh, meeting. Appreciate that amen again. And then you'll go, you'll go off. Something will happen. Somebody get in your face. Something goes wrong. You leave church today. Five miles down the road, you get a flat. Why did God do that? Uh, he didn't. <laughs> Why is God always the fall guy? He didn't do it. Well, why did it happen? And then I go out and look at your car. You got four bald tires on there. <laughs> Maybe you did it. <laughs> Kelly's tires almost new, and there's a nail in it right now. Why did you do that, God? I, he didn't do it. But I'm going to go to the tire store and plug it. I didn't lose my salvation over a flat. Amen. 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 <laughs> Boy, that'll preach. <laughs> and you you cuss up a blue streak when it happens. I don't I don't repeat all that stuff, but it's it's bad. <laughs> and do you feel better? Your flesh does, yeah. but you feel even more miserable. Like you, you walked away from God. Well, you did. You did. Well, repent. Just repent. <laughs> what does that mean? It's not, it's not a dirty word. Turn back to God. Amen. That's all. Amen. Say, God, I repent. Thanks for forgiving me and cleansing me from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John 1, 9. Well, if He cleanses me from all unrighteousness, where am I now? Righteous. I'm back to my identity again. It's so easy. We can spend all day long telling you all, all the good stuff in the Bible. I've already told you enough already. But all the good stuff in the Bible, you say, man, I want that. Well, you're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. You're going to have to contend for the faith. You mean if I pray it don't just happen automatically? There's a good possibility. I've seen instant healings. I prayed for one guy at the FCDC. He, I couldn't find him. <laughs> and he was in his bunk with his leg up, and it was swollen to beat the band. And he just did that on the basketball court. I said, uh, come on down, let's pray for you and get you all healed up. He said, I don't know if I can get out of bed. I said, you can. Come on down, and let's get you healed up. Oh, well, can't you pray for them there? I can pray for anybody anywhere, but it's something about when you get with the church, the corporate anointing, it's just easier to believe. That's why you believe stuff online because you're watching the preacher and that's your church online and you don't seem like you get much because you need to be with the body. Amen? It's just easier to believe. Praise God. Well, the guy hobbled down. And we're in the NPR room. The NPR room fits about 15 to 20 people very tight. Very tight. And we had a full house. He come walk, walking in. And he about to sit down. I, said, I forgot his name. but I said, don't sit down. Come on up here. Let's pray right now. And I told everybody what we're doing and what he did and what happened. It was an you know, accident. He's trying to, trying to win. I told, him to, I told him to sit right there. I kneeled down. Put my hand on his ankle. Why'd you do that? Because it says in Mark 16, 18, lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. It says lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It didn't say lay hands on the sick and, you know, they might recover. It's worth a shot. I mean, you know, the chances are, you know, three out of ten, but let's do it. Roll, roll the dice. I mean, we're playing crafts. We might win. <laughs> no, I'm believing God to heal the boy right then. I don't plan the next step. If there's not a 100% healing, I'll look at you and say, keep standing in faith because you got your healing. But if you're always planning for the next step, there's always a next step. If you get me, I'll pray for them. I said, get up and walk around. He looked at me, I ain't walking around. I said, get up and walk around. That's a step of faith. (laughs) That's a step of faith. And he got up 
And he went like this. And he's walking in front of all his peers. And he's back and forth. And he went like this. And he looked at the, his, his peers. He said, God just healed me. I, I, I'm not playing, guys. Just like that. In jail. How did he get that? Because he'd been coming there to find out who he is in Christ. He didn't get it because of who he was in himself. And his bad past experience and bad past life. I remember picking up a young man at a, at a rehab. We won't name any names, David. <laughs> he'd come into church. I, I went to pick him up. He's coming out with a, with a crutch. <laughs> What'd you do? What was it? Basketball too? No, skateboarding. 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 <laughs> That'd tear you up quick if you're not careful. <laughs> and he said, I don't know if I can come. Oh, no, you can come. <laughs> I said, I'll help you. It was a humbling experience. I'm helping him get in the car now. <laughs> you know, you don't want to be that humble. Well, you know what? If, if, if you walk in humility, that is the, the ground for God to move. Praise God. He got in the car, brought him down to the church. We preached. I said, David, come on up here. Let's get your leg all healed up. Mm-hmm. He, <laughs> you'll never forget that. He brings himself up on his crutch. He... Sits in the front. We all gather around to pray for him. And I think you said thank you or something. I said, no, no, it ain't done yet. You get up and walk now. You remember reaching for the crutch? Mm-hmm. Oh, I do too. I wouldn't let you have it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, get up here. Hang on to me. He hung on to me and let go and he started walking. Now, when he went back to the rehab, carrying his crutch kind of bothers people. It works, don't it? Uh Uh-huh. But you've got to get you out of the way and get in Christ and let Christ move. If you put on Christ, 1 Peter 5, 6 says, clothe yourself with humility. Who's the most humblest person ever walked the earth? Amen. Clothe yourself with Jesus. Just receive... And watch what happens. What if it doesn't work? What if it does? What if I leave here today and whatever I brought in here is no longer in my body? What if I leave here today and I got a doctor's appointment next week and the doctor says uh, uh, it's not there no more? Is that okay? What if you get up tomorrow morning... And you normally reach for some kind of addiction, whatever it might be, and all just just it, it was a crazy morning. I reached for my Bible. Hallelujah! Come on. What if that just happened? If you give God an inch, He'll take a mile. He will. And in this world we live in right now, hell is happening everywhere. It's getting worse out there. Ever since. The COVID mess started over four years ago. People are freaking out everywhere. If you watch any kind of decent news, people are losing their minds. Can I get a witness? And they're in fear. I drive probably about 500 miles a week delivering car parts. And my take on people's driving now is it's like fear's off the chart. And they do really stupid stuff now because I sit up high and you see these people thinking, what are you doing? I've seen so many wrecks. But fear will control you. Don't let it. Well, how can I stop it? Identify with Christ. Get in faith. You've got to realize fear and faith are belief. Fear is just the perversion of faith. Faith is belief in God. Fear is belief in the devil. Faith opens the door for God. Fear opens the door for the devil. That's why Job said in Job 3.25, the things which I greatly feared has come upon me. Because Job messed up. I don't care what your commentary said or the preacher that don't know what he's talking about says. Job messed up. People are like, I'm just like Job. No, you're not like Job. 
he had a bad year out of, out of 140 years. And you've had how many bad years? Because you keep identifying with that one bad year. Thank you for that amen. i got to get off that. i now got to get off Job. But he said the things which I greatly feared has come on him. Why is that? Because you're believing it. You ever been in fear and, and you just thought, you know, that's going to happen, that's going to happen, and it happened? That's belief. Well, what if I get in faith and you know it's going to come to pass, it's going to come to pass? It will. It will. But we give up too quick. Why? Because faith is the override to where we live down here. Fear is the default. You've got to choose faith or by default you will be in fear. You've got to choose God or by default you will be serving the devil. Oh, I ain't going to serve the devil. Well, I don't want to get so radical and fanatical like you, Brother Chris. Well, you're serving the devil. <laughs> you're serving the devil. Well, I don't like what you're saying. Well, you, you don't have to go with what I'm saying, but you can turn to Matthew 12, 30. It says, Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. Well, I'm not against him. He said, if you're not for me. But I'm not against him. Are you for him? Well, I don't know. You're against him. There it is. Mm-hmm. Neither are you. Yes. Oh, I'm on that fence in the middle. There's never been a fence in the middle. Right. <laughs> That's why your life is so screwed up. There's never been a fence in the middle. God says, I wish you were cold or hot. But now that you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth. The Greek says, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. Why does why he talk so hard about the people in the middle? Because you've got to make a decision. Because if you haven't made a decision, the decision's made for you. You're serving the devil. The cold and the lukewarm are serving the devil. They just The lukewarm knows how to talk all the Christian language. Come on. Ooh, that's it. Come on. They can get in with the church and man, they can talk up the hallelujahs and the praise of the Lord and the blood of Jesus and on and on and on. And then all of a sudden, you, you go by the corner bar on Monday night and they're right there. And I doubt they're witnessing. Time to take this serious and have a good life. Just a few more clicks, we're out of here. So why don't we go ahead and see how much of heaven we can get for His glory... Until we get there. How about that? Amen. For His glory. People see that you're healthy. What did you do? Come out to church this Sunday. Hear this message. You need mind renewal. That's what you need. You need some mind renewal. You're thinking wrong. If you're thinking wrong, you'll believe wrong. If you believe wrong, you'll act wrong. If you think wrong, you'll believe wrong. And if you believe wrong, you'll act wrong. Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As you think, it gets in your heart. Your heart is your belief system. Romans 10, 10 says, With the heart man believes, so it's your belief system. So when you think, it gets in your heart. You start believing it, then you start walking it out. Good or bad. God or the devil. Sick or in health. It's up to you. Well, I've never heard stuff like this before. Well, you need to keep coming back. You need to keep coming back. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, Sunday is my, my morning to sleep in. Okay. Okay. Well, enjoy serving yourself. <laughs> you notice I'm not religious. I'm not orthodox either. If I, walked into, if I walked into the jail in 2007 that way, they would have found some place to hide me. <laughs> They're fed up with churchy religious folks. They needed the truth. Well, your circle of influence needs to see Jesus radiating from you. Let Him radiate wherever you are. It's just not right now. Tomorrow morning at work. This afternoon on 27. Let, Let Him come through. People cut me off, say, God bless them. God, help them not to hurt nobody. Help them not to hurt themselves. And Lord, help them find a cop. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Amen. (laughs) You know, I got to get a little jab in there, right? Is that okay? I'm I'm thinking of them. Amen. (laughs) Praise God. 
Did y'all get anything out of that this morning? Yes. Glory to God. <laughs> Let's get out our special music and worship God with the, with the song Say the Name. And nobody leave because after we've sang that, we're going to pray for people, okay? Okay? Because you might be saying, you know, I still feel that pain. Uh, you know, I'm still bothered. Well, why don't we connect our faith at your faith and get you feeling good before you leave? Let's stand. Praise God.